blessings, blessings. Let me get started. Let me share to my other pages. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Okay. Okay, we're going to try to do something different today. I want to... Um, I want to let me know if you're interested, Elder Moore. Um, I want to welcome everybody to deliver me from me. And for the month of February, I want to talk about, uh, we're talking about healthy relationships. Because we have been failing as a people overall, people in the world, as well as people in the uh, body of Christ in the church. And I have found out a lot of times we don't educate ourselves on learning how to be healthy. Uh, we just learn, we just continue on from learned behaviors. We learn what we see on TV from books. And I can say a lot of things I messed up by listening to other people, um, looking at unhealthy people, doing what I saw them doing. And also I messed up when I was following my own self and not educate myself. And so I'm on this journey. I believe uh, God with helping people to learn how to be healthy because this is a day and a time. Uh, Sometimes we're so uh, we're so unhealthy, and we're, uh, we're 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 comfortable being unhealthy. And I found out when you're working on being healthy, it's different. And a lot of people don't like the different feeling because they're used to being unhealthy. But I believe that when we begin to learn how to become healthy, when we learn how to be. Um, deal with our brokenness, when we're learning how to face our issues, when we're learning how to confront our issues and we learn from our mistakes, we can have healthy relationships because then we're going to be entertaining healthy people. You will begin to be in healthy relationships and we'll learn from our differences. And so today we're going to talk about what's in your heart. Because the Bible tells us in uh, Matthew 6 and 21, say, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so a lot of times, you know, people's heart is everywhere. People's heart is on hurt. It's on pain. But then, yeah, I found out the more people that are hurt, the more people that are broken, these are the ones that want to be in relationships. And the more that I try to tell them, you know, no, you need to focus on getting you healed. You need to focus on loving you. It's the, those are the very ones that's looking for a man or a woman to make them happy because they don't want to deal with their brokenness. They don't want to deal with their hurt. They don't want to deal with their pain. And so when we're asking what's in your heart, we're talking about what's in your mind, what's in your soul, what's in your inner being, what's the appetite of your emotions, uh, uh, um, what it is that's on the inside of you, because what's on the inside of you, that's what you're going to give to another person. That's right. The focus of the posture. Right. And so a lot of times people's minds is on somebody else because a lot of times they don't want to deal with themselves so it's easy to deal with somebody else it's easy to put your mind and your attention on another person because you don't want to deal with yourself and this is where you got to be willing to deliver me from me is saying no I got to look at how am I thinking where are my thought processes how do I feel about myself that's why I asked the question if somebody hurt you um, do you, do, what do you do? Because I'm finding out a lot of times people hurt people and they don't care. A lot of times, blessings to you. A lot of people hurt people and people, they say I'm sorry and they're not trying to prove that they're sorry. And this is what I'm saying. Some people don't have any home training. Some people are not used to somebody saying, if you hurt somebody, you need to try to make it up to that person. You need to try to let them know, you know what, and I'm not going to do this again. I'm going to try my best not to do this again let me prove to you that I have changed but I found out people don't do that they'll say I'm sorry or say forgive me and they continue on and God began to show me people do that same thing with him when we commit sin Lord forgive me Lord I'm sorry and the very thing we go back to the very thing that we just told God we were sorry about and seeing that same heart that same mindset it pushes over into the church we say we sorry and then we do the very same thing to hurt somebody else and we use sorry as a scapegoat but we still continue on the same way and so I want to ask you all, even if, are y'all interested with coming in and sharing with me? Because this is like a special Q&A. It ain't like I'm some expert, but I do know 
that I'm learning and I'm educating myself uh, a lot of mistakes that I made that I'm going back to reevaluate what did I do wrong what it is that I should have done even a lot of times instead of trying to figure things out talk to somebody who's healthy talk to somebody who's going forth talk to somebody who can help you because a lot of times we just assume and I know in my past uh, fake it till I make it oh I know what I'm doing and I didn't know what I was doing and so this is where I believe that you got to educate yourself you got to educate yourself you got to read the word of God because you know what God first we got to have a relationship with him because having a relationship with him is going to teach us how to have a relationship with another person and a lot of times I believe this is why our relationships are failing because people don't have a healthy relationship with God a lot of times we call God when we want something we call God when we in trouble we call God when we sick otherwise we don't have time for prayer other times we don't have time to read our word other times we don't have time for God and so we get in relationships and you want to give that man or woman your best or either you get in a relationship with your friend and you're not used to having a friend you'll try to buy that friend because you want to let them know how much you appreciate them but then when we get in a relationship with God we only we become a taker we only want to take. And so this is what one of the scriptures we're focusing about. For where your treasure is, there is your heart is. I got some, I got five things I want to share about even about with relationships. Um, these are relationships all over. Yes, confess our faults to one another and be here. You know what? If we can do that, if we can just confess our faults and stop trying to put on airs as if we're up here and and, and, and and everybody else is beneath us, but if we begin to say, hey, I messed up. What I did to you was wrong. I agree. That is good. That is good. And that can help us learning how to face our fears. It will help us how to confront issues. But a lot of times because we don't want nobody to think that we don't know uh, for whatever reason, but this is where we got to be willing to confront these issues. So here, I got uh, a couple reasons I'm going to share. Why do relationships fail? One of them is that we assume that we are right. When you assume that you know it all and that what the other person doing, they don't know what they're doing, but you know everything. See, th th this is another reason why our relationships fail because we're not listening. This can, this can be with a parent and a child because if the parent always assumes they right and you just disregard what that child's saying, you know what? That's why the relationship falls because you're not listening to what that child is saying because that that child can be very much telling you something that you need to hear but because if you think that you're right because you're the parent can I tell you I grew up in one of those households that you know what mama was right you know what and she told you what to do I believe that was a way that she was trained and raised but you know it wasn't too much listening to what we were saying as little kids and this is what I have learned throughout the years you got to be willing to know what was good what worked and what did not work because then when I asked myself when I was in trouble did I go tell mama no because by, by certain things I wouldn't tell her because she was already she already knew I already knew that how she felt about it and so I would try to hide her or I would go tell somebody who I think will be receptive to me and see and that's why relationships fail this is why one of the reasons kids don't talk to their parents because if the parents always assume that they are right and the children are wrong can I tell you even listen to my kids saying mom stop yelling y'all hear me say that all the time that was one of the things that helped me save my relationships with my kids because I always used to yell that was one of the things my mom did to me and they kept saying you know what and you wonder why we talk to other people and I had to realize I don't want my children going to talk to nobody else I want them to talk to me and so I realized I had to work in my my son mom work on your facial expressions <laughs> and saying this is why I had to learn and this is what you got to be willing I don't care you're never too old to learn and especially if you want your relationships to be better this is where you got to be willing to listen because and they can tell you some things that can help draw you closer 
but my relationship was failing with my kids because I did not want to listen at first. And so I had to be apt to listen. The number two is refusing to listen to the other person's feelings, even though they are a child, even though it's your coworker, even though it's your friend, you still should be willing to listen, even if you disagree. Can I tell you, we can agree to disagree, but see, and this is why we got to get this heart together. We got to get this mind together because if our mind is so toxic, you're going to tear down God or dang relationships that God has blessed you with and you are looking and wonder why did something happen to your relationship. Can I tell you, people allow the enemy to tear down God or dang relationships because they refuse to educate themselves. They refuse to change. And I, I made up my mind. I want everything that God has for me, and that's showing me that you have to educate yourself. The Bible even talks about my people perishing because they lack knowledge. That means you got to be willing to listen. You got to be willing to say, I don't know everything, but guess what? I'm willing to learn. And so letting that person know, I want to listen to you because I believe if you start listening, because sometimes when we're talking to people, you're going back and forth. You can't hear one another, but when you let that person talk, I have found out even myself when you know going back and forth with a person but I had to ask God give me self control that's one of the fruit of the spirit Lord give me self control that even if another person is saying stuff that are dis- that's not truthful but still teach me how to have self control why because you need to be able to listen so that you can be able to see why is that person saying what they're saying but if you're not willing to listen guess what you're not going to hear what they're saying and you're arguing and y'all arguing over each other words so guess what that conversation and that relationship is going to go downhill because you didn't prepare yourself for it the next one is repeating dysfunctional patterns that we have uh learned from our upbringing, from our parents, from the television, from the culture, from our friends, and from ourselves. So you see, if, if they cuss uh, people out, or they slam the door, or they hung up the phone in somebody's face, and just because you dislike it, you'll turn around and hang up the phone and do the same thing. That's right. Not in one ear and go out there. You got to really listen because a lot of times we got to, when you're in a relationship, you got to be willing to see where is that other person coming from? Because when the enemy is fighting that relationship, he having that person to look at you one way and you looking at them one way. And so we got to be willing to see uh, uh, why are they saying what they saying and where is they getting that from? And see, this is where I'm telling you the enemy, he likes to put things in our hearts. He likes to put things in our mind. This is why I always say, please get healed. This is why I say deal with your issues because when a person is is broken when a person is bruised can I tell you they're gonna always reduplicate what they learn they're gonna see what mama did they're gonna do what daddy did and so even if mama and daddy was in a bad toxic relationship you'll find yourself doing the same thing they did when you know it didn't work for them but we'll do the same thing because that's what we saw blessings to you and so this is where we got to be willing, and I want y'all to jump in because I'm going to actually pull you in. And so if you want to jump into the conversation, because this is where I want this to be a special answer and question session. And uh, I know that y'all are texting, but I want y'all to actually come in. And so when you're ready to come in, send me the request, and I'm going to bring you in because I feel like I'm not the only one, but I feel like we got to be able to help one another with relationships because I found out when I start asking questions, I start getting a uh, uh, few responses when I start saying what is love to you see a lot of times we don't want to share information but we should be willing to learn from one another because a lot of times we can learn stuff that are toxic we say ugly stuff to other people but we got to be willing to make sure that we all are learning to be healthy because like I tell people it's not about Cupid it's not about Valentine God is love and so if God is love that means I got to see what's in my heart how come I don't look like God how come I don't feel like uh, God feels about certain things that can be an indication because I got something my mind and my heart is somewhere else that it should not be 
And see, and this is why we wonder why we keep getting the same kind of relationships. But you know why? Because of what's in you, what's in your heart, what you learn, and you're duplicating what you learn. So if you learn, well, you know what? Mama say you got to always have you somebody on the side. Mama say you always got to have you three. So guess what you'll do? You'll have you, if you're a female, you'll have you three men on the side because that's what you was taught. If a, ma a daddy said you always have you three women on the side, that young man would do the same thing what he saw his father doing. And this is the patterns what I'm talking about. We got to understand everything that what was taught to us was not of God. Um, I hear some men say that they family members and the men told the boys, Watch this pornography. Watch this uh, 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 pornographic videos. Not understanding. We wonder why a lot of young men are addicted to pornography. Because that's what they tell them. This is what you need to watch. So you'll learn what you'll know what to do. Instead of having healthy conversations, we're forcing our men to go out there to be dogs, to be cheaters, and to make them feel like they got to have more than one woman. Because they saying, oh, you're a real man when you do this. See, these are unhealthy behaviors that people have learned. And see, and this is where we got to be willing to say, no, that's not God. That's not God. I heard, I heard a, a, a man of God say, he told the men in the church, he said, as long as you take care of your wife, <coughs> He said, but he, he no, he said, you can have enough woman, you can have another woman on the side as long as you take care of your wife. And the men said, Amen. See, this is what I'm saying. This is the kind of stuff that's in people's heart, and people were agreeing with this at church to say, as long as you take care of your wife, you can have an outside relationship. And see, people listen to folks tell them to give them the license to do this, and they began to mimic those behaviors because it looks like the person who gave them the information oh they got a nice car oh they got money they so it looks like they're they're getting information from a good resource not understanding that the enemy is coming to warp that person's mind and so we got to be careful of information that you getting from people because this information is not making you know it's, it's turning you into a monster it's turning you into that of the world and I have found out we got to stop duplicating that's right Elder Moore we really do because as I begin to look and as I begin to talk to people, you know, I like to talk to people to, to kind of get like information and, you know, what are they thinking? What are people's thought processes? And a lot of people, they begin to, we, we're in the church, I'm finding out, we begin to sound like the people in the world. We begin to think like them. We begin to think that love is about what you buy me. It's about, you know, I'm happy for, we happy today. And so that means we in love. No, that's not meaning because we can look at this movie and it looks like is love, an hour and 30 minute movie and so we say that they're in love and so you just meet somebody two weeks and now you in love and you say I'm ready to marry them because you don't want to take the time to get to know that person see this is an indication you gotta even know what's in that person's heart I'm not saying that God can't uh, 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 send nobody to you but I'm saying is what's wrong with getting to know a person especially if you know you have failed relationships with, in your marriage, failed relationships with your children, failed relationships with your friends, fair relationships in the church, fair relationships um, on your job. This is where we got to begin to look at what we're doing if we're going to have good relationships because I feel like this is why people are not loyal. This is why you have so many people that are users. They are get what they want to get from you and next they'll move on to the next person. They have no sense of loyalty, no sense of being committed. But if you had a relationship with Christ, you have to be committed to Christ because the Bible tells us that we got to meditate on the word day and night. So that's telling you, you can have time to be over here, be over there, be over this and come to them next time when you want to know because if he's your God, if he's your husband, he is expecting for you to be in a, a, a mutual relationship. He's speaking to you, but he's expecting for you to be in place. He's expecting for you to pray. He's expecting for you to study so you can get to know him. He's expecting for you to fast so that you can die to your flesh and he can begin to show you those things that is wrong with you. Because it's one thing about with Christ, he shows you when I go to him, he shows me what's in my heart before I can talk to anybody else or before I try to tell him about anybody else, he deals with me about me first. And so even so, when if you're in a relationship, that'll make you not be so judgmental 
coming at another person because you understand Christ going to deal with you. And when you are used to him, you're going to automatically, when I get into prayer, after I begin to start thanking the Lord, I start telling the Lord, Lord, I love you, Lord. And I, and I begin to start repenting. I begin to let him know, you know what, God, I had some things on my mind, some things that I said that I know. I begin to start telling on myself. I don't wait on him to tell me what I need to do. I begin to start doing it on my own because it's part of my relationship. And I understand that he's not judging me, but he loves the honesty. He loves the relationship that we have with him. But then when you're in a relationship with another person and you feel like I can't talk to them because uh, I don't want them to know or uh, they're going to look at me differently or they may not think I'm special no more. See, these, this is why our relationships are failing because we're not learning. You're supposed to be at a place where you should be honest with whoever that you're in a relationship, whether or not even with your spouse. You should be willing to tell the truth. You should be willing to say how you feel, even if the other person don't like it. You should be willing to tell your child uh, um, how you feel. Well, no, I dislike what you said. I dislike what you did. Oh, no, that, that dress is not fitting of you. Oh, no, that don't look. We should be willing to tell the truth. But a lot of times we're so sensitive because we're not, we don't know how to have healthy relationships. People feel comfortable lying to us because I don't want to hurt their feelings. Not understanding by you lying to me, you are already hurting me. Because see, now I'm walking in a place thinking one thing when really it's something else. But if I go to Christ, I'm telling, he's telling me the truth where he sees, well, your heart is not right. You got, you holding unforgiveness in your heart. You need to forgive so-and-so. He's going to bring it to me. That's right. Speaking the love uh, in truth, but uh, speak, yeah, speaking the truth in love. And so, and this is where we got to be willing that we respect one another and we honor one another to say, you know what? I'm going to work on this relationship because when you're working on it, you're proving to this person. I have hurt you. You're willing to say what you did to that person. That's another thing that I'm finding out. People don't want to say what they done. Well, I'm just saying, will you forgive me for what? What, what happened? I'm just saying, forget. We, we don't want to own up. Some don't want to own up to what they feel. They don't want to own up to what they did. And so that right there, a red flag goes off to me. Because when you don't want to own up to what you have done and you don't want to tell the person what you done, that's an indication that the spirit of pride is in operation. Why? because you don't want to say anything. You don't want to let that person know what you're doing. Because in deliverance, you got to be willing to take ownership to say, what I did, you know what, I'm jealous of you. You know where uh, I want what you have and I feel like what I have ain't good enough. No, this is where you got, you're telling that person what you genuinely feel, but you want to say, can you please forgive me? So that's why I've been so mean to you. That's why I've been so rude to you. So wh why am I doing that? Because I'm letting this person know I'm going to expose that spirit of jealousy in me. So that person going to know when they looking at me, they going to look at me to see, am I still going to act the way that I used to act or am I going to act differently? Because I just said, I'm sorry. And so when I'm saying that I'm sorry, it's not an excuse to do it again. Sorry means that I'm going to change. Repent means that I'm changing and going in a different direction and that I'm not going to continue on in that same direction that I used to go in. And see, and this is why even just like even we're, we're talking about this, we assume that we're good but if you look at our relationships, we have double lives. We got double lives we put on in front of people and we act, act as if everything is fine when things are not not fine. We put on front because we want to make people think that it's something that is really not because we feed off that. That's our culture. And see, and this is where people struggle to say, you know what? I got a problem. People struggle to say, you know what? I need some help because I don't know how to be healthy. That's what I had to tell myself. I don't know how to be healthy. I just, I don't know how to be healthy and I need to get around people. I need to start learning, watching videos, taking them classes. How do I become healthy so I can have good relationships because I, I, I kept saying why do I keep going around the same cycle so I had to realize it was some unhealthiness on the inside of me and so this is why we got to understand we got to be willing to look at ourselves and recognize if you are healthy or you are unhealthy can you look at yourself and say you know what what I'm doing is unhealthy a lot of times people don't want to talk about this See, even like this, if I was talking about something, prophecy and all this other kind of stuff, 
the lives will be jam-packed, but when it comes to things like this, people don't want to listen. Some people don't want to listen because they're comfortable in their dysfunctional. They think that they can go to another person and you're going to get a healthy relationship. How can you become healthy when you're not healthy? If you're used to eating junk food and somebody put a plate full of food, healthy food in front of you, you're not going to want to eat it. You know why? Because you got an appetite for junk food. And so that's the same way we are in our hearts. That's why I say what's in your heart. Because if your heart is full of mess, if your heart is full of lies, if your heart is full of bitterness and anger, guess what? You're going to attract the same kind of people because that's what's in your heart. And we need to be able to know what's in our heart. Can you look at yourself and say, you know what? There's insecurity in my heart. There's fear in my heart. You know what? It's fear of, of, of being alone. There's fear that I'll take this because I don't want to be by myself. That There's insecurity problems because I feel like I'm not pretty enough. I feel like I'm not good enough. I feel like I don't have enough money. See, this is what you got to be willing to look at yourself and see what's your issue. Because if you can't tell your issue, guess what you're going to keep doing? You're going to keep repeating the same cycle. And you're going to be expecting for a healthy relationship when you have not taken the time to get healthy. And this is why I've told the Lord, even if I say one, if one start looking at themselves and start recognizing I need to change, this is what we got to do. Because, see, if we don't, we're going to keep on going through these same cycles. And you wonder why you in. This is why God tells us, even when you're in relationships, this is why inner healing and deliverance is so important. Because you need to find out what's in you that's toxic. I tell some of the students in my mentorship class, I said, you got to look at your parents. You got to look at your mother, the person who raised you. You will begin to mimic the very thing that you saw whoever raised you was a female. So if you saw her as a person and she did not take care of herself, I can tell you nine times out of ten, you're not going to take care of yourself. If you seen her being a people pleaser, can I tell you, you're going to be a people pleaser unless you get around some people to say, why are you like that? Because God began to show me, I begin to pick up the same toxicity that I saw in the upbringing and I start looking at the patterns. The women in my family start looking the same. They start doing the same thing and that's when I recognize your heart is your mind, your soul it remembers toxicity. It remembers whether or not it's good whether or not it's bad and so every relationship when something familiar happens, your mind your brain automatically tell you what happened in the past, it's going to happen then. Unless you get in this word of God unless you get healed and delivered otherwise you're going to repeat those same cycles so the fourth one is Hold it on to lies to protect yourself and your feelings. We fail at relationships because we hold on to lies. Because you know what? Don't nobody love me. And I rather, I heard my mama say, it's best to have a piece of man than to have no man at all. I heard my daddy say, it's best to have a piece of woman than to have no woman at all. And see, we'll begin to duplicate them same beliefs, them same upbringing, because I rather have somebody than to not have nobody at all. All, which really it was telling you how not to love yourself that you needed another person to make you feel good about yourself even our culture I heard one of my co-workers telling a, a, one of the ladies a girl you need a man so you can feel good about yourself I said why would you tell that lady that See, our culture, it tells uh, 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 one another that we need the opposite sex or we need somebody in our life to make us feel good enough when God, for him being on the inside of you, he makes you good. He makes you good enough. And when things have happened to us, we are supposed to deal with those issues. We're supposed to deal with those things that have caused us pain. We're supposed to face those issues. If that means going to a counselor, if that means having spiritual counsel, using both of them, talking about what happened, having somebody to help you navigate through that process, that's what that means. But if you don't 
want to deal with your issues, you'll just go on to the next relationship and you're expecting all this good behavior when you never took the time to be healthy yourself. And this is where you got to understand, even with the things of God, God just don't dump it on you. You got to be willing to deal with your issues because when you're dealing with your issues, that's where the faith going to come from. That's how you're going to learn to take him at his word. That's how you're going to learn to trust him. That's how you're going to learn to fast and pray because you, the Bible say to break the bands of wickedness. That's what you're going to have to do to break these mindsets because these mindsets, that's what try to hinder us from getting close to God and we wonder why we don't feel God's presence. Why don't we feel, why don't we see the signs, wonders and miracles? Because a lot of times we are still wounded in our mind and it's hard to receive if you're wounded and you have no desire for him. You don't even know what to look for because even if God is speaking to you, I can tell you that even I was so wounded I was so broken, God was talking to me, and I didn't even know he was talking to me. And here it is, I was brought up in church, raised up in church. I had no clue because the message was preached at us, and they didn't teach us about the spirit of God living in us. They didn't teach us that, you know, he would speak to us in our mind. You know, we only thought that he would speak to the pastor. And so whatever that God wanted to tell you, he would tell the leader. And so, therefore, I'm hearing certain things come to my mind, but I thought it was me. I didn't even recognize that the devil talked to you in your mind. This is why I teach certain things. That's right, because they're having the wrong mindset. And then that's why I say, what's in your heart? Because if you don't get out the toxicity, if you don't get out them um, learned behaviors, you don't get out the wrong, uh, the false doctrine, what was put into you, you're going to find yourself stuck trying to figure out where is God, not realizing God was there all alone, but because you had so many voices in your heart, you had so many voices in your head that you couldn't hear his voice because you thought it was you. And this is why the, uh, the devil, he loves for people to think that you know what God don't talk to me God don't love me because and they don't realize that that's the devil speaking to them in their mind and they thinking that it's uh, it's the way that they feel not understanding it's the devil trying to bring them further and further than he can and this is why how can you have a good relationship with anybody else if you can't have a healthy relationship with the person that lives inside of you you confess Christ he go with you everywhere you go. You go to sleep, he there with you. You go to work, he there with you. You go to the mall. Whatever you do, he's there with you. But we, we don't even recognize he there. See, th that's when you got to really look at that. Do I really have a connection with the spirit? Because he's a spirit. He's an entity that lives on the inside of you. And so if he's an a entity that lives on the inside of you, how come he's talking and you don't know he's talking? How come he's showing you what you, what you need to stop doing and yet you don't even recognize this is him telling you this is the direction you need to go. But you doubting yourself because you saying, I don't know because it's different. Not understanding this different voice that is telling you and you know would the devil tell you this no but would God tell you this yes would you tell yourself this no so this letting you know it's him but you gotta know that it's three voices your voice God voice and the devil voice there are thoughts the Bible say in John 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God and so we got to understand that he lives in us and so this is why you read because you're learning how to cultivate this relationship that when you read the word when he's saying for God so loved the world you it's, you're supposed to be reading for God so loved the world that he gave his only son for me Christ came a curse for me he said, by my stripes, you are healed. See, this is when you read it and you're making it personal because this is a relationship between you and him. So when you pray, you ain't just reading your laundry list. Lord, I need you to heal my children, heal my husband, heal the world, heal the school, heal the church. You talking to him like it's a robot and you're not even opening up yourself to let him to interject. Because if you was on the phone with somebody, you will let them talk. You ain't going to just talk and you blah, 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 blah. You're going to be quiet 
and you're going to let them talk. Well, that's what prayer is. Prayer is that you're talking to him. It's just like when you come into somebody's house, you say, hey, how you doing? So when you get into prayer, oh God, I magnify you. Oh God, I glorify you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for being my protector. Thank you for being my healer. You telling him who he is. This is the same thing you would do if you come into somebody's house. Oh, hey, how you doing? You're going to interact. Then once you come into that place of prayer, you begin to clean yourself. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for I have sinned against you. Forgive me for thinking some things I shouldn't have thought. Forgive me for speaking some things I shouldn't have never said. See, you understand when you coming into prayer, now you coming into a place of repentance. You coming into a place, you just don't go in. Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, I need you to do that. You don't do that. We don't even do that when we get on the phone. And see, this is what he's trying to show us. Do you really, do you realize that this is how you treating the creator of the world? Because he's on the inside of you. If, and that's it on uh, uh, broken fellowship. That's right. That's it, Elder Moore. It's an unbroken fellowship. It is where we have gotten so common. This is when you got to understand when you become so common with a person, when you become common with a person, you begin to uh, disrespect them. You don't look at them as important because you feel like you're on the same level with them. And this is where I learned as a pastor, you have to have boundaries with people because sometimes people will begin to see you in a low place. They see you crying and they see you going through. Sometimes people look at you, they're not mature enough to see you go through. They're not mature enough to see you go through some things. And then they'll begin to look down on you and they begin to talk, talk to you like you ain't nothing because they don't understand you're human just like them, but you go through humanity just like anybody else. And so, but when we get to a place and we get into prayer, oh Lord, you know my heart, amen. You just talk to him as if he wasn't nothing. So this is why you got to understand when you're in this relationship with him, you're talking to him because you're opening up your heart. Father, what it is that you want to speak? Lead me and guide me, Holy Spirit. How, what you want me to say? What you want me to do? There's times I went into prayer and he said, don't say nothing. I just sat there. I, he said, don't say nothing. The Holy, the presence, he just wanted me to be in his presence. I was on the flow and I was just in his presence. And I say, speak, Holy. He said, I just want you to be, I want you to commune with me. And we got to understand this is what God is requiring of us. So this is why you got to deal with your heart. This is why when you go to the altar, this is why even before you go to prayer, empty yourself, empty your heart, empty the stuff that you're dealing with, the bitterness, the anger, the resentment, the frustration. You need to empty yourself because he guess what? How can you hear what he's saying if your mind is full of all other voices speaking in your head? You're not going to be praying prayers that are led by the spirit. You'll be praying your own prayers. But see, when you pray your own prayers, you're not going to get much breakthrough. Matter of fact, you're going to get very limited breakthrough. But that's when you got to be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit because when you pray his prayers, you're going to get the perfect prayer and you gonna get the breakthrough. There's times I got ready to pray. God said, I don't want to hear no language. I don't want to hear nothing in English. I start praying in the spirit. Rope or shake it. And that's all I did. It was just me and him in the spirit realm. See, this is where you understand. What is he teaching you? He's teaching you that when you're in a relationship with somebody else, you got to be led all the time. You're not going to always be in control. It's not going to always be what you want. So you, you, he's teaching us that you got to be willing. You, it, you got to be sacrificial. Okay? So when you say, how do you deal with a situation that weighs heavy on your heart? The first thing you need to do, you need to give it to the Lord. Just like how you would tell me, my supervisor, and they did this and blah, blah, blah. Empty yourself. The Bible tells us, cast all our cares upon him because he cares for you. And so when you empty yourself and you begin to say, God, you tell him how you feel. This has frustrated me. This has made me feel however you feel. Just empty yourself and say, I give it to you. Once you give it to him, now you listen to what the word says about that situation. You may say, uh, Psalm 51, Lord created me clean hands and a pure heart. Renew me the right spirit. Father, I ask you to wash me. I ask you to cleanse me. What are you doing? Now you letting him now minister to you in those areas. And he may show you what you have done. He may have showed you how you looked at it wrong. And so and this is no, you got to understand, woman of God, fear is a spirit. 
And so when you're feeling the spirit of fear, you got to know that that's the enemy. Because the Bible says God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. And so the Bible says that we got to walk by faith. And so you say, God, you know what? This spirit of fear, I give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. But Lord, you know what? I'm walking by faith, and this is what I'm going to do. No, you're going to have to trust him. You're going to have to trust him because it, as you trust in God, you're going to see that he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you and tell you what to do. But as long as you hold on to it, the enemy is going to use that to oppress you. He's going to use those things to push you and to weigh you down. Next thing you know, you're having chest pain and you feel like I can't handle this. It's too much. That's why the Bible say, cash all your cares upon me because I care for you. See, he don't want us to carry these things in our our heart. So when we got all these things on our heart, mm -mm, take it to him in prayer and tell it everything to him. And once you tell it to the Lord in prayer, you leave it there. Even when you get up and the enemy try to bring it back to your mind, say, uh-uh. I gave it to the Lord. I gave it to the Lord and he got it. And you know what? I'm walking in my healing. I'm walking in my deliverance because you got to understand it's never meant and designed for you to hold on to uh, situations that weigh you down. And this is what I'm saying. And this is why a lot of times we take stuff in relationships. Because we just take abuse, take abuse, take abuse, take abuse, take abuse. Because we're used, not saying that you do, but I'm just saying this is what, I can say that's what I have done. Taking abuse because just used to holding things instead of, like I just told you, give it to the Lord. Because can I tell you, a lot of times we try to spare somebody else's feelings and you're hurt and they walking around fine. No, this is where you got to be willing to be free. Because when we're talking about deliverance, it's where you got to fight for your freedom. Because I have found out people will get mad at you when you no longer be in their trash can. People will be mad at you when you're no longer like them. And so when you start making the change, the choice to say, you know what? I don't want to hold this stuff no more. I don't want to, you know, but walk around feeling some kind of way. You'll find out people will get an attitude with you. And I can say, if this relationship is if it's not God ordained they ain't going they're not going to want to accept what you're saying if, if, if it's not God ordained you give them some time and you pray about it and if they don't want to see you got to be willing to understand I'm not going I'm not going to cause my my mind to be dysfunctional and unhealthy to preserve you no I got to let you know that this is heavy on me I don't gave it to the Lord and if the Lord telling you to say something to the person you need to say something to that person because again this is why our relationships are failing because we're not being honest with each other because a lot of times people I don't want to hurt they feeling well your feelings being hurt matter of fact you having all this pressure and all this weight on you and they ain't thinking about nothing because you have not told them what's on your heart and this is why we got to be willing to go through this process if we're going to work to be healed and so that's why I, the first thing I tell people if you're going to go through inner healing and deliverance it's going to be work and can I tell you a lot of people is not going to like it because they're used to you doing what they want you to do. And now that you're making strides to move forward, people will begin to now have a problem with you. And that's why I was saying with the fourth one, you got to uh, you got to be willing to stop holding on to a uh, 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 lies to protect yourself or to protect the feelings of somebody else. No, I got to let it go. No, I no, I I don't like this. I've been saying that I like it, but no, I don't like it. Matter of fact, it gets on my nerve. Matter of fact, I can't do this no more. Well, you always said you did it. Well, I lied, but today I'm stopping lying. I'm gonna tell you I don't like doing this. And you gotta be able to tell the people the truth because see that's what's wrong. Well, I don't wanna hurt nobody. Well, if you telling them the truth, long as you telling them in love, long as you're not being rude, but you just letting them know, listen, I, I can't let you do this to me. I had to tell somebody, you can't keep calling me dumping your trash on me. Listen, I say, you told me you pray, I pray. The Bible say cash your care, but you can't keep calling me every time you going through. You know what? That, that, that stopped that conversation. They stopped calling me. You know why? Because I had to open up my mouth and I had to let them know I'm not going to allow you to keep hurting me. I had to tell people, what you are doing, this is wrong. This is toxic, but 
behavior. I'm not going to let you keep talking crazy to me. I'm not going to let you keep talking foolish to me. You got to open up your mouth because people will do what you allow them to do. And that's all across the board. Family members, loved ones, people will do what you allow them to do. And this is when you're working on being healed. You got to let them know, I'm not going to, I'm going to set up boundaries. And what is a boundary? Don't call me after 9 o'clock. That's my boundary. And so they, it's, it's 9.30, and it's not an emergency. And what you doing? Uh, ma'am, I asked you not to call me. It's 9.30. I got to go to work. Well, all right, then. Have an attitude as much as you want to, but I'm letting you know this is a boundary. Because my thing is, then you stand up, minister to them, it's 12 o'clock, you got to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you got to get up at 5 and pray, you got to go at 6 o'clock and get ready to go to work, and then they up here sleep, and you sitting up here on minister to them, and they could have waited till the next day, but because they so used to being there for them, they broke the boundary. No, you set the boundary. No, I'm not going to let you do that. I had to tell people, where you going? No, we, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you every day. We're not going to do this. I'm not your Holy Ghost. I'm not your fo- I'm not your Holy Ghost. That's what God is for. You're not going to call me every time you got, no, set up boundaries. That's right. And you really got to do that with family members. Especially sometimes people would, would they want to borrow money. No, I'm sorry. I, I know you got the money. No, I don't have the money for you. I don't have the money. I can't keep letting you borrow the money. And then I got to fight to get my money back. So no, I don't have it for you. That's a boundary. This is what you got to do. Because see, what, what, what am I telling you to do? You're, t- you're holding the standard in the relationship, and they ain't going to keep coming with that cray-cray stuff. They ain't going to keep coming. Well, what about the Lord? The Lord said you ought to help people. you right. And the Bible says if a man don't work, he don't eat. So don't tell me one thing the Lord said, but you don't want to listen to the other thing the Lord said. People will try you when it comes to things like this. This is why you got to know what's in your heart, because people will use you and abuse you, and they will try to play the church card to try to throw you off. That Well, you know where you supposed to forgive i do forgive but that don't mean that i'm gonna keep letting i'm gonna keep being your fool that don't mean i'm gonna keep letting you hurt me so now i know how to love you from a distance there were some people i had to tell you are toxic. I love you all, but y'all keep up too much mess. Y'all keep up too much confusion. And therefore, I don't want them kind of people in my life. Yeah, I don't, matter of fact, I don't want a relationship with you all. I love you all, but you are toxic. You smile in your in people's face and you throw darts behind their back. And then I had to tell them when they throw darts behind my back. You know what they said? You right. And so if I'm right, why do I want to be in a relationship with you when I know you've been hurting me? Yeah, I forgive you. Yeah, you've been doing this thing over and over again. And that's telling me, I told you I don't like it. And if you keep doing the same to me, so that telling me I got to remove myself. And so that's what I had to do. I had to remove myself from certain relationships because they were toxic. They, and I said, you know what? I can't deal with that. See, some people like messages. Some people like confusion. And they want to try to add, like, oh, you think you up? No, 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 no. I just understand in God that I got a right to say yes, what I take. And I got a right to say, no, I'm not going to take it. Can I tell you, if you're going to be healthy, you got to use the word N-O. No. You that know sometimes, no. Because you'll begin to see <laughs> people they, 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 they say, oh, oh, you changing. No, I'm not. Ch- I'm just understanding. You want to just call me when you want something. You want to just call me when you want to use me. Otherwise, you can see that I need help. Or if I call you, you're not there for me, but you expect me to be there for you. See, all you got to do is look at people. The Bible says, so the man thinking in his heart, so is he. The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So if their heart is always helping other people and then they don't help you, he already excuse me, he already let you know what kind of relationship you got. But you just got to be honest yourself to say, you know what? They're not respecting me. So if they're not respecting me, why am I trying to be committed and faithful to something that's no good to me? See, and this is where you got to begin to understand and learn because when you get those God-ordained relationships, 
they're going to treat you the same way that you treat them. Hey, sis, I call you, I was praying, and God put you in my spirit. You ain't the only one giving prophetic words. They give you prophetic words. You know what? Hey, sis, what you doing? I want to take you out to breakfast. I'm on my way. What you doing? See, it's the same way. It's where you are giving to one another. But when people don't do you the same, you got to begin to understand and be honest with yourself. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your children. You got to understand. Understand, people know what they are doing. You got to understand that people want to use their money to go help somebody else, but then whenever you tell them you need help, they never have it for you. That's the indication you need to look at that relationship. The relationship, you are, if you be honest with yourself, you'll be the one that's been holding on to the relationship. And God is trying to show you, you're pouring into something that would never grow. Because you the one that want to grow. You the one that's pushing it. But they're showing you that they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything because they don't want anything. They're happy with the way it is. But you the one doing all this extra stuff. And you wonder why, you know, you feel like you got the short end of the stick. You wonder why, you know what, you the one upset. You the one doing all this. But it's because they're not looking at you like that. And so we got to learn to find out what relationships are worth uh, 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 worth fighting for. This is why I say you got to look what's in your heart. Look what's in their heart. Be be able to look at a person and to see what type of person they are and what they're doing. And to say, what are their benefits in my life? And what are the cons in my life? You got to be able to ask yourself, what am I doing that's good for me? Because I had to look at my life and I had to realize I was doing a lot for people, but I wasn't doing a lot for me. And somebody had the nerve to tell me, uh, you selfish. I said, how you say I'm selfish because I'm learning to love me? I said, where you were when I hated myself? Where you were when I was giving so much to other people? And I wasn't giving to myself. Now I'm taking care of me. Now I'm trying to make sure my mental state is good. Now I'm trying to make sure that I'm physically good. Now I'm trying to make sure that I'm spiritually good. Now you want to say that I'm selfish? People will say that when you no longer neglect yourself. And so that's what I'm saying. When you go on to being healthy, you got to understand you got to start taking care of you. You got to watch what you put in you. Things that I like that I know that's not good for me. Things I love break. I know, but it's not good. Those cars are not good. So guess what? I'm cutting back on my intake of bread. No, yes, I love it. Yes, it tastes good. But I understand. I want to be healthy. God lives in me. So how can I tell about I want to have a healthy relationship with other people? And I don't even have a... God can't even live in a healthy house. Because see, we only want to look in ministry to preach it. But you got to understand, He lives on the inside of you. You ain't no good if you, you, we got all these medicines. We out of shape. You can't go walking. You can't do nothing about the fallout. You praising uh, uh, 30 minutes and you about to fall out. You can't even stand on your feet an hour and praise God. Something is wrong. We got to be willing to look at ourselves and see how are we are treating our relationship with the Father. How are we treating the relationship with Holy Spirit that we're not even talking to him. The Bible say build yourself up in the most holy faith. Get in that word. Put being intentional. I I got to put that word in me. I got to meddle on that word. Why? Because if I don't, what about when something going to happen? You know something in life is going to happen. You know you're going to have to go through something. So why not put that word in you so that when something comes, you're going to be able to bounce back up. Why? Because you've been preparing for this. You've been par- preparing yourself by speaking the word. We got to take care of our temple. You got to look at your body just like it's the actual church building. Because you are actual the building that he lives in. He lives in me. He lives in you. And so therefore, you got to take care of you. You got to watch what you put in you. I was watching something on TV, and I said, you know what? I can't watch them kind of movies. It had too much. I said, because you know what? God lives within me. And you got to have a God consciousness. Because if you don't have a God consciousness, that telling him that you will defile him with anything. And you can't let no anything defile you because you carry the glory of the Lord. You 
care of the presence of the Lord. When your hands, you lift up holy hands, you want your hands being clean. You want when you go into a place of prayer, you want your mind to be where you can where you can hear him speaking to you. But if your mind is so bombarded with worry and stress, frustrated, what people did, you can't hear what he's saying because you're not in a good mental state. And this is why I say you got to first learn how to have a healthy relationship with him because he's going to take teach you how to have a relationship with another individual. And that's on all across the board. You ain't going to be able to treat them right if you ain't treating God right. If you ain't talked to God, if you ain't laid out before him, you ain't spent no time with him, you ain't, you ain't going to tell me you're going you, you gonna to get somebody else your best who can't deliver you. You're going to get somebody your best who can't heal you. You're going to deliver somebody your best and they ain't save you. Shame on you. See, that means we cheating on God because we giving our best to another man or woman who can't help us the way that God can. And so having a relationship with God, it teaches you. I value him, and I'm not going to let nobody take his place. Whoever comes into my life, I'm not going to let my children take his place. I'm not going to let no job, no money, no house, no car. I can't let nothing take his place in my life because my relationship is with him. That's why even when you go through, you understand. He said that you know what? He you endure heartache as a good soldier. You know he's the kind of husband. Come on here. The Bible said that you are his bride. He said that you know what? I'm coming back with a for my bride. With Without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish. You got to know who you are. Even if you ride in the bus. You got to know who you are. Even if you stand in an apartment complex. You got to know that materialistic things don't define who you are in him. Because he lives within you. And so if he lives within you. You ought to take better care of you. You ought to not let nobody call you out your name. You ought to begin to go exercise. You ought to cut back. You ought to watch what you eat. You ought to begin to speak declarations over yourself. It's where you looking at yourself say, I'm an ambassador in Christ Jesus. These hands are anointed. I walk in a power. I walk in authority. I walk in dominion. What are you doing? Because you're valuing your relationship. And guess what? When you open up your mouth, he's going to show up because he knows that you, he's number one in your life. And so when you stand in need, he's going to show up because he's saying they've been faithful to me day one. They've been faithful to me. They talk to me two or three times a day. They don't just want to talk to me at church. They don't want to just talk to me on Bible study, but they talk to me because they genuinely love me. And this is where God is saying this is what it's like to have a God or dying relationship because you respect him. You respect him and you give him your best. In my closing, the Bible say in Romans 12, present your bodies a living sacrifice which is holy and acceptable unto God. This is our reasonable service. So it's going to be sacrificial. In other words, they're telling me you ain't going to feel like doing it. You ain't going to want to do it. But you got to be willing because you love him. You got to be willing because you, you, you honor your covenant with him. You're going to be willing. I got to pray. I got to sit and hear what it is he want to say to me. And I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to say, speak, I'm listening. Even if he don't say nothing, I'm still going to listen. I'm still going to sit in his presence because he's teaching us how to be submissive to him. So, ladies, you saying that with your husband, you got to know how to be submissive. God will teach us and he'll train us. But we got to be willing. That's it, prophetess. We got to be willing because if you're not willing, you ain't going to see it. If you're not willing, you're going to think this is about church. Ooh, we had a good time at church, and you don't say nothing else to God until you go back to church. The devil is a lie. That means you're religious. That means you're traditional. Because if you got a relationship with him, you ain't finna sit up there and treat him no in a kind of way. It, it ought to vex you that you know what, Lord, it, it, and this kind of worship calls us to look at our relationship. No condemnation. I'm not trying to condemn nobody, but I'm trying to show this is what we got to look at relationship. He showed me this is why we fail because we miss it on our first relationship with him. He said even if single women and single men, if they begin to love him with all their heart, all their mind, all their soul. He said they love him because he going to show you what your spouse going to treat you. He going to show you what they going to be like because he going to raise up somebody who going to give you their best just like how you giving him your best. Good God Almighty. But see, we can't give nobody our best when we ain't giving God our best. 
And this is what God is trying to tell us. What's in your heart? What's genuinely in your heart? Can you be honest to say what's in your heart? How you feel about God? Are you really treating him like you his wife? Are you talking to him or are you only coming to him when you want something? Or when you need him to do something? Otherwise, you read your Bible like you're reading a novel. It ain't like there's no kind of communication between you or him. It's just where you just read it and all right, I ain't heard God say nothing. Well, if you talk to another human being that fast, you ain't going to hear them say nothing either. And so if he's a spirit, you got to be patient because the spirit of the living God can tell when you want to be with him and when you don't. He can tell when you give him your best. And so I pray that uh, as we close out this month, as we close out today, um, that what's in your heart, you really begin to be honest and that you really begin to examine What's in your heart? Your heart is your mind, your intellect. It's the way that you think. Uh, it's the way that you see things. It's your deci- desired decisions that you who, that what, that you have established who you are. So you got to see how you looking at God. Are you looking at him like he's some man that'll just fall away? No, he's inside of you, and you take him everywhere you go. And so whatever you do, even whatever you think, he know about it. And so when we don't even say, Lord, forgive me for I cussed somebody out. Forgive me for what I was thinking. You're totally disrespecting him. How can you respect the God that lives inside of you and you ain't showing no reverence for him? See, we got to go back to the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord, we ain't going to be saying and thinking on any and everything like how we normally do. Because we understand God is on the inside of us. So I pray that this message was a blessing for you. Go back and read uh, Matthew 6 and 21. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And so if your mind is always on the money, that's your God. Your mind is always on the women, that's your God. Your mind always on the men, that's your God. But can I tell you, it's not too late. Romans 10 and 9 say, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior. Asking him to come into your heart and save you. Find you a Bible-based church and begin to go to Bible study. Begin to go to Sunday school. Learn how to cultivate. Read your Bible. Psalms 1 say, meditate on the word day and night. Watch what God do to your life. You ain't got to worry about a preacher or teacher trying to take because a lot of times when people, God separates you from somebody, people oh I did this, I did that, but when you cultivate a relationship with God can't no man or woman take away that anointing. What I'm telling you, can't nobody take this away from you because I'm teaching you how to have a relationship for him and guess what, he'll be our Valentine every day. We ain't got to be talking about some uh, for Valentine day but we'll be loving on him every day because you say you know what he watched over me all night long he protected me from all harm and danger that's why I love him because when somebody try to do something he reveal it to me he exposed it to me he begins to take care of me and so who would love somebody like that so let's get this stuff out of our heart so you can learn to make him to be your first heart. Amen. So I pray the blessings of the Lord be upon you all. I love you all with the love of the Lord and I will see you all next week. So be blessed.